This video is about a Honeywell oil burner control module. And I thought, well, I've never really opened one of these before, and I thought it's going to be fairly straightforward. It's going to be like circuitry uh, that's sequencing relays or motors or something, a motor with a cam or something like that. And it's not. It turns out it's like so complex that it's taken me a lot of time to actually work out how this actually works because the circuitry. The whole mechanism looks like it's from the 1960s, but still actively sold these days. But they've augmented it later on. They've uh, added bits in the circuit board, which allowed them to use the main chassis. But uh, they have added bits that I'm guessing are to do with the modern high-low voltage sensing. I'm not really sure. I kind of wanted to circuit board out of this, but it's a very much a terminal thing for the whole thing, the way it's been put together. And I kind of need this module, so I can't really analyse the circuitry too much. But to be honest, the circuitry isn't even fractionally interesting compared to what's going on in the front here. So the way I'm going to do this video, I'm going to show you the principle of how an oil burner works. Then I'm going to give you a walkthrough of how this works. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you operating various uh, modes of failure. Firstly, the correct mode of operation. I've added some neons so you can actually see that working. Uh, and the lockout system and how it's activated by either the flame sensor. Let me grab the flame sensor. The flame sensor, which is showing out of scale in the 2 mega ohm range at the moment, I pull the little cover off. It exposes the flame sensor and immediately goes super low resistance because it's a little LDR in a sort of tube at the end just aimed roughly in the direction of the flame. That's uh, important to note. It's what it controls, this coil. But I'll be showing you the different modes of this uh, super zoomed up in macro style so you can watch them operating. But the main bulk of the information in this video is right at the beginning and then later on you can choose how much of the rest you want to watch. It's entirely up to you. You can also skip backwards and forwards in it. You can high speed it, slow mo, whatever you want to do with it. But let's take a look initially at how the boiler ignition system is supposed to operate. So a typical oil burner has a blower and on the same shaft is usually an oil pump with a solenoid valve on it because that means that although the blower is running it doesn't necessarily mean it is actually pumping oil out. The sequence of operation is that the blower starts up uh, and the oil pump is just circulating inside but it blows for a certain length of time to actually purge air through the system. At the same time in this particular unit, the high voltage spark starts appearing at the nozzle. After it's purged air for a while, the uh, solenoid operates and now oil will flow through the pump and it will be atomized from a fine jet that looks very similar to a 3D printer jet. And if everything goes to plan, the spark ignites the oil vapor, it bursts into flames and the flame from the very dark cavity in, in a boiler uh, is detected by the flame sensor which is set just back behind the airflow to keep it cool and it sends a signal back saying everything's gone to plan and the system then goes into standby mode just leaving the blower running and the oil pump running but the ignition off and just keeps monitoring the flame. If the flame goes out again it will have another go at lighting it. If the flame goes out and stays out it will automatically shut everything down and signal an alarm to the controller. It's all done in a very devious and clever way. Right, Quick jump cut because I'm going to get the paperwork in to show you how this uh, system operates. Right, the hardest thing about this video is working out where to start. Let's start with the connections at the bottom of the unit. We have live, we have neutral, we have the alarm output which goes live when it goes into alarm mode. We have the oil valve 2 which isn't always used, in this case it's not used. Uh, and oil valve 1. This is the solenoid on the side of the pump that actually allows the oil to flow. We have the fan output, uh, uh, which I've just drawn fan. Really, it should be blower, but I've written fan because it fitted better. And we've got the little high voltage sp uh, spark here, which shows the, uh, the ignition transformer output. Then we've got two connections for the flame sensor. Note that the flame sensor is effectively referenced to the mains, but too neutral, but everything should always be treated as being live. All British control systems tend to be 240 volt. The whole mechanism is operated by two devices. There is a bimetallic strip with a heater at this end of the unit, and it is switched through this contact here, which is normally closed when it's all powering up. And uh, two things can happen. Either the biometallic strip can be activated and if everything goes to plan, this contact will then open at the end and that won't just uh, kill the, the heater in the biometallic strip, but it'll also kill the ignition spark. 
However, if things don't go to plan, this thing will keep moving up and it goes up to the end and it pretty much stalls. And if we look at this slider plate at the top, the bulk of the sliding plate is being pushed by the bimetallic strip, but these little springy contacts on it, they're not contacts, they're just little springs is the best way, springy plates. But if this stalls at the end of travel, then these plates will flex back and then the bimetallic strip itself will continue moving forward and it will slide this little copper plate forward. That pushes against that and that activates these contacts down here, which are the emergency shutoff. It shows that something's gone wrong and it isolates the system. It will not reset itself. You have to push a button, which is this piece of plastic here. Uh, this is basically forms a spring. When you push it, a little wedge down here clicks that contact back over to reset it. Other things worth looking at in this picture are that the end of travel, just before it's going to stall, it hits this little latch. And this is a little spring-loaded latch that can pop up. When it does, the solenoid here, the, the magnet, uh, can't move fully across. It can only move partially across till it hits that, but it's only going to be actuated when it finally this finally reaches the end and allows that to click that up, and then the magnet can click fully across. That's important. The whole lot is very delicate and complex in its construction. It's super precise. It's amazing, in fact. Here's a sequence of operation. The heating element uh, starts heating the biometallic strip and it starts moving across. The first contact change state is this one. It just goes over the midpoint of this and uh, when it does so, the contact clicks over to the other side. But what it's actually doing is it's actually just parking that contact momentarily. It's not actually doing anything electrical at that point in time. The next thing that happens is that when it gets up to this end, if this coil isn't active, because this coil only activates when it's seen the flame present, and it's got the ability to detect the flame is continually present uh, before it's even been lit, which means the sensor has failed or it's got the ability to sense, well, basically the sensor going short circuit or open circuit. But if everything's going to plan and this is not energized, then as this travels across, it clicks this contact over, click, makes power to the oil valve one, and that then starts spraying the oil out. It ignites, then this coil comes in, uh, and as the thing travels up to the end, it gives that short time delay, it finally hits this uh, little cantilever latch and that clicks over fully, which does two things. It, the magnetic coil pushes with this little pin against that so that it will hold these contacts closed, but it also breaks the contact to the ignition spark and also to the bimetallic coil. The bimetallic coil then cools down. And at this point, because this coil is being held in, the blower is running all the time because it's just powered continually all the time when this thing's powered. But the oil valve is held closed by that pin and as this cools down, this plate then moves back slowly to its reset position. But in doing so, this, by this uh, when it goes over the midpoint of this, this switch doesn't reset because it's being pushed in by this pin that overrides that. So it stays closed and the oil keeps flowing. But as it does go back, this switch then resets to its original position, which has been energized by this oil contact, and that brings in a second oil valve for a higher power mode, which is not used in this instance. So this is actually activating switches in both directions, but it's conditional upon other things happening before. Lots of stuff is conditional. I drew a little uh, line here, I wrote O on both those, just to show that these two contacts are connected. The unit then reverts back to its cold condition and the thing runs. Two things will uh, change that. If the flame goes out, this coil will click back out and because that uh, switch is in its original position, this contact will snap open, it will kill the oil and it will start the spark again, it will start the heater again and it will try and reignite. If it fails to reignite, it does something completely different. It does that thing where... If it keeps going and the coil is not energized, then that will literally just stall the end and that little spring mechanism will push over and this contact here will go from the normal 
which powers everything, everything in here, including the coil, the scent circuitry, the motor, the spark and the oil burners. Everything is powered via this contact. If it fails to actually light and that then biometallic strip pushes too far, it trips this and it goes over to the alarm and basically feeds live out to the alarm and kills everything else. Um, other things worthy of note. The things worthy of note are this. This is stupidly complicated. <clears throat> okay, fault condition number one. The light sensor has been left out. It's been left just lying out. Hold on, let me get the light sensor. Someone's pulled it out the boiler and it's just lying on the floor. That means it's possibly sensing a light in the room which would indicate that a flame was there. So when that happens, it would not give an indication of whether proper ignition had occurred. So what happens there is it goes through the normal sequence. But because this is powered all the time, this uh, coil here it has a magnetic field. And if you see, I've added a few wee dots here. The magnetic field that because it's happened out of sequence, this plate here is now held magnetically. And because it's held magnetically, the thing is going to traverse up, uh, but it's not going to be able to flick that switch, so the oil valve is not going to light. The This is not going to be able to break because this little plunger here is stopping that from going forwards because that's already held magnetically and didn't click over out the way. And the thing then stalls at the end and then trips the lockout. The other scenario is if this didn't detect a flame at all. In that instance, the thing is moving up to the the end. It's gone open circuit. Uh, the switch will change as normal because this isn't energized. The thing will go up to the end and at the point that coil should then have been unlatched and that should have opened to kill the power to the heat and the spark, it keeps heating and that's what pushes it up beyond the end and that causes it to trip out this again. So those are the two failure modes that can uh, affect that. Right, now I'm going to show you the thing actually operating. To show it operating, I've connected five neon indicator lamps. The spark, the blower, which is powered all the time as long as this thing is powered, oil valve one, oil valve two, and the alarm neon. To emulate the spark being lit, I've wired a little button across it, so at the correct point in the sequence, I shall push this button and it will indicate the spark has occurred. It is now active. So the first thing that happens is the blower is powered and the spark. The bimetallic strip is gradually moving across. You'll see this in greater detail later. It parks that contact. It's activated the uh, oil valve one. I'm pushing the button. Uh, the magnetic, it's reached the end and released the magnetic trip. And now the system is resetting, it's cooling down, and the blower and the oil valve are running. It's monitoring the flame. If I was to release this, it would start the spark again and it would uh, try and restart the ignition sequence until it lit. So now it's cooling down, and the bimetallic strip, and I'll blow on it to cool it down. It's coming back, and oil valve 2 is that contact that was parked earlier on. In a moment, it's going to actually go beyond its center point, And when it does, it will bring in oil valve two, which will bring in the second stage of oil injection into the unit. It's getting very close to it. It's very slow. It's timed entirely by the bimetallic strips moving back. It's quite clever. And it's brought in oil valve two. And now it will revert back to its uh, cold position. If something goes horribly wrong, if I say, for instance, I just take that off, pretend the flame's gone out, it's running the spark again, the blower's running, it brings in the oil valve again after cutting them off, but it's not going to achieve uh, ignition this time, that is going to stall out. It's signaling alarm and a little red LED underneath here has started flickering to show that the button needs pressed. And the only way to reset that is to let it cool down completely and then push that button to reset it. And that's how it works. Now, the next sections of the video are going to show a super close up of this to show all those things happening with good illumination so you can see all the different modes of operation and failure. Let's take a look at a normal cycle first. So now power has been applied. The bimetallic strip 
is going to start moving the actuator across. The actuator puts valve two into the park position, enables oil, spark happens, um, and now the successful spark and ignition has been achieved. And now that actuator, its heater has been deactivated and also the spark has been turned off at the same time. So it's now reverting back to the other end. As it reverts slowly back to the other end, it resets the oil valve two, which is the middle contact, which now actually has an active live contact thanks to the fact that the oil has been enabled and it will click over and enable the second oil valve so it goes up to the second stage of oil injection. If at any point in time the flame goes out, the coil drops out, it kills the oil, enables everything in the same sequence again and tries to actually ignite and if it succeeds then it just does the same thing again and if the oil goes out uh, if, if it's intermittent it will recover to a certain degree okay let's take a look at a different scenario scenario two the flame detector is faulty and is continually detecting a flame the cycle starts as normal but the coil is trying its best to actually go across now the magnetic remnant stops the oil valve closing, really. And although that can click over, it still can't go over all the way. It remains powered. That went too far. You can see that it's tripped out now. And the alarm indicator light, you can just see it shimmering against the element, has tripped. And the unit will stay in that locked out state continually until it's uh, reset by pressing the button that clicks that contact physically back over. Scenario 3. The flame does not light, or the flame sensor is open circuit, or the flame sensor is dirty. Sequence is starting. It will not detect the flame this time, and the coil will not energise. It starts moving across, parks the contact, the oil starts spraying, it's trying to ignite it, it doesn't happen, stalls against the end, keeps pushing, and trips the safety circuit out, and locks out.